Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you've been enjoying your weekend. My apologies for not having an episode out yesterday. I、uh, just arrived in Asia and I'm still quite jet lagged, but today's episode should make up for that. We cover the last major developments from this week before we move into next week, and we begin today's episode with the housing sector. Hao Hong, a widely respected and outspoken chief economist and partner at Grow Investment Group. In a widely shared interview this week, said that China is facing the prospect of a long-drawn correction in its property sector, with the overhang in the housing inventory likely to take more than a decade to clear. This period represents one of the longer estimates for the oversupply of housing in the country to clear, and if accurate, would be very painful for the slowing economy. On Thursday, Hong told U.S. outlet CNBC, "Quote: If you look at the inventory overhang situation at this sales rate, it will take about two years to clear all the inventory that is outstanding in the market. And then, if you look at the property under construction, we have six million square meters under construction. At this rate, it will take probably more than ten years to clear all those housing under construction. So, all in all, we're talking about multi years in terms of correction." End quote. The statement comes just after new official and unofficial numbers indicating that home sales and prices are down, a trend most analysts expect to continue well into 2024. Some contrarian voices, like Logan Wright at Rodian Group, believe that the worst of the housing crisis is behind us. Hong disagrees with this optimism, however, expressing, quote, "At this juncture, people have to get used to the idea that it's probably going to take much longer to clear all the inventories." At the same time, one has to find new growth spots for the economy to go forward, instead of just relying on just the property sector and property investment for economic growth. End quote. In previous economic downturns, he added, the property sector would respond quickly to stimulus and rebound after two or three quarters of finding the bottom. Quote, This time around, it seems to us that the property sector has peaked and the long cycle is coming down. As a result, because the market is not ready for a long-term correction, they are more accustomed to a quick rebound. According to past experience, the market is caught off guard. As a result, the confidence and the market response is being hurt by this lack of preparation. End quote. Next up, tensions in the South and East China seas, locations of several critical geopolitical flashpoints, continue to boil. This week, Beijing announced that it had deployed naval and air forces to conduct patrol operations on Wednesday and Thursday in the South China Sea, as the U.S. and her ally, the Philippines, held maritime drills in the same region. The operations aim to quote resolutely safeguard China's sovereignty, security, and maritime rights and interests. End quote. With the People's Liberation Army in its announcement adding that the forces were on high alert and fully aware of and prepared for any military activities that spoil the South China Sea and create flashpoints. On Wednesday, the Philippine and U.S. militaries began their second maritime drills in the South China Sea in less than two months. The Philippines deployed four naval vessels, while the U.S. dispatched an aircraft carrier, a cruiser, two destroyers, and multiple combat aircraft. On Friday, the chief of the Philippine military's public affairs office confirmed that two PLAN (People's Liberation Army) Navy vessels from a distance shadowed the U.S. and Philippine forces. Beijing and Manila have traded accusations in recent months over several run-ins in the South China Sea, including charges that China rammed a ship last month carrying the Philippine Armed Force Chief of Staff. We've covered all of these encounters in previous videos. China lays claim to almost all of the South China Sea, where trillions of U.S. dollars in trade passes every year, including waters claimed by the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in 2016 said China's claims had no legal basis, but China has rejected the ruling as unlawful. Meanwhile, in the East China Sea, data released by the Japan Coast Guard this week shows that the number of days Chinese government vessels were spotted in the zone of disputed islands in the East China Sea hit a record high in 2023. The China Coast Guard also set a record for the number of vessels operating in the same waters around the Japanese-controlled but 
PRC claimed Senkaku Diaoyu Islands. According to the data, Chinese vessels entered the disputed zone on 352 out of the 365 days during last year, an increase of 16 days compared with the previous record of 336 days set in 2022. In 2023, a total of 1,287 Chinese government ships operated in the area. More disquieting, the data also show that last year, Chinese Coast Guard ships reportedly intruded into Japanese territorial waters on 42 days, the second highest number of days since 2013. Quote, She is apparently trying to maintain the power of the Chinese Communist Party by appealing to maritime rights and interests in domestic politics, and also by leveraging territorial nationalism to influence domestic public opinion. In other words, the Senkaku Diaoyu issue is closely intertwined with China's domestic politics. For this reason, Japan must continue to strengthen its surveillance capabilities against Chinese maritime activities, especially those taking place near the disputed islands and Taiwan. The Senkaku Diaoyu Islands sit about 170 kilometers northeast of Taiwan. The Japanese government sees China as trying to pressure Tokyo as Japan becomes more involved in the Taiwan issue. End quote. Next up, we move from one critical waterway, the East China Sea, to another, the Red Sea. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you're getting some value from this episode, I only have one ask. That is to like and subscribe. This is the primary way in which this channel grows. The main way it is shown to new people is if the algorithm is happy. For anyone who wants to help keep the channel financially sustainable, which allows me to continue doing this every day, open and free for all, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. My commitment has been a channel open to all that is reliant primarily on subscriber support rather than corporate sponsorship. And with your assistance, I know I can keep it that way. Thank you so much, everybody for the ongoing support. This week, 11 countries, namely the United States, Australia, Bahrain, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Singapore, and the United Kingdom, issued a joint statement condemning the Houthi attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. The statement reads as follows. Ongoing Houthi attacks in the Red Sea are illegal, unacceptable, and profoundly destabilizing. There is no lawful justification for intentionally targeting civilian shipping and naval vessels. Attacks on vessels are a direct threat to the freedom of navigation that serves as the bedrock of global trade in one of the world's most critical waterways. These attacks threaten innocent lives from all over the world and constitute a significant international problem that demands collective action. Nearly 15% of global seaborne trade passes through the Red Sea, including 8% of global grain trade, 12% of seaborne trading oil, and 8% of the world's liquefied natural gas. International shipping companies continue to reroute their vessels around the Cape of Good Hope, adding significant cost and weeks of delay to the delivery of goods and ultimately jeopardizing the movement of critical food, fuel, and humanitarian assistance throughout the world. Interestingly, China was not one of the signatories to the statement. Indeed, as we have seen in previous videos, China has shied away from even criticizing the Houthi attacks, with some Chinese commentators saying that it isn't China's problem. This is all despite the fact that these disruptions have very much hurt Chinese interests directly. The spot rate for shipping goods in a 40-foot container from Asia to Northern Europe now tops 4,000 US dollars, a 173% jump since mid-December. Rates from Asia to North America's east coast have risen 55% to 3,900 US dollars for a 40-foot container. Judah Levine, head of research at Freitos, Speaking to US-based Bloomberg, reported this week that services from Asia to Northern Europe and to the Mediterranean both cost more than twice their levels in January 2019, but are still well below their peaks during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Drury World Container Index published on Thursday, rates from China to Europe have more than doubled since December the 21st, and those from Shanghai to Los Angeles have risen 30%. With such small margins, this is a painful development for many Chinese exporters. And thus once again raises the question, what is China's strategy in relation to these attacks? Quote, Why is the PRC not doing more to stop the attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea? Doesn't disruption of this vital shipping route impact PRC exporters and importers too? 
The readout from the recent Central Conference on Work Relating to Foreign Affairs said it is important to resolutely oppose the attempt to roll back globalization and abuse the concept of security, overcome the structural problems hindering the healthy development of the world economy. So you would think Beijing would want the Houthis to stand down. End quote. I would be interested in your thoughts on this question in the comments below. Why do you think China is not doing more to stop the attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea? Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you everybody for watching. Have a wonderful Sunday, a great weekend, and I will see you all tomorrow.